So good afternoon. I want to introduce to you a graphics framework we have developed already a long time ago. Uh, but there are good reasons which I want to describe in my talk why we are currently using this graphics framework with Julia. Uh, the GR framework uh, has been originally written for Python. Uh, it's a software uh, which has a long history. And a few years ago, we started using our software with a REPL language. And uh, Python was the first choice at this time. And uh, what we needed was uh, just uh, display scattering data in real time or things uh, every scientist today needs, just like uh, visualizing two or three dimensional data, even for publications or, or making glossy figures for, for uh, papers or all these things. But at the time, there, there came new uh, requirements, and uh, we had to speed up our, our plotting uh, software due to real-time uh, uh, new, new uh, real-time proposals, monitoring proposals. Uh, the data rates were increasing, and uh, we had to visualize big data sets, uh, and they often had a dynamic component. So. Uh, the scientists wanted to see all these things in real time. And one big uh, thing was they wanted to create animations of their visualizations on the fly. Uh, normally, our scientists produce a lot of images. And once they have uh, uh, stopped the simulation, they simply take all these images and create an animation from, from these uh, Pictures. This is not a very a nice way to do it. And uh, also, we, uh, these new requirements le led to, to performance problems with our software. So we ask ourselves, how could we, we fix this? Uh, we tried several things. For example, we tried to use uh, JIT. Uh, in, in Python, we tried to use uh, pre-compiled. Uh, uh, Python modules with Thyssen and all these things. Num maybe you know Number or PyPy. Uh, yes, you can uh, get an improvement there. It, it might be a uh, factor, factor 10 or even more. And uh, you can distribute your, your, uh, your simulations. It's all fine. But when it comes to the point that you want to make your visualization faster, uh, you run into problems because most of this visualization packages we tried uh, could not be uh, uh, improved. So why not use Julia? Uh, I looked uh, into the GitHub repo from, from Julia and saw uh, different uh, approaches. There are different packages uh, were available to do two or three dimensional graphics. But you can see on the right side that there, there is a problem. You have either two dimensional graphics or three dimensional graphics. You have either interactive graphics or you have graphics which can be produced in your browser. Uh, and all these tools have uh, their advantages, but there was no tool which could uh, solve all our problems. So that's, in, pr in principle, that's the crux of the matter. Uh, there's no common tool for two or three dimensional graphics, especially for hardware accelerated graphics. And we have very poor performance on large data sets, large data sets, but probably with about uh, millions of points. and. Uh, Another problem, for example, with Matplotlib, which is known as PyPlot in the Julia world, is that they only produce figures. So uh, it's not uh, very easy to produce uh, animations on the fly. You can do this in, in PyPlot or Matplotlib, but it's uh, not very easy going. So uh, we took our old software, and uh, I wrote a Julia wrapper for, for our graphics framework. 
And it's, in principle, it's a kind of procedural graphics uh, backend. It's completely written in C, so I only had to write a C core wrapper, and it was very easy to write this wrapper. It was very similar to what I did for Python. And uh, it has built-in support for both 2D and 3D, although in the 3D world we only support legacy OpenGL. Uh, and one big advantage is it's interoper there's uh, interoperability with uh, GUI, uh, GUI toolkits and, and web frameworks. That's very important for us because we had a lot of uh, programs written in Qt or WX widgets and all these things, and they should work with our graphics software. So we have a very good user interaction, and finally, the software is ready for version 0.4. So, uh, there's another nice point. For example, I, I decided uh, to write a backend for, for Matplotlib. Uh, as most, as a lot, as a lot of our uh, scientists were complaining about pr problems with the speed of Matplotlib, I tried to write our own backend, which uses the components of GR. And with the next Matplotlib release, uh, you will be able to use the uh, GR framework because we have already made a pull request. So uh, there will be an uh, environment a variable called MPL backend, and with this environment variable, you can select another backend, uh, for example, the GR framework. And uh, you have extended capabilities with, with, with this backend because uh, I will show later, you can produce videos with Matplotlib on the fly, and you can both create uh, uh, graphics with, three d with 2D and 3D elements. So uh, in this picture you can see, on this slide you can see the layer architecture of GR, and it makes it possible to do all these things that I have described to you. Maybe uh, it's a little bit too... Uh, the, the small, too small, uh, but I will try to, to explain it in, in words. We have a layer structure where we have a strict uh, 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 maybe separation of what's device independent and what's device dependent. So the user really does not have to uh, think about special commands uh, for, for and for, for graphics devices. In, in Matplotlib, for example, you often see that you have to use special commands to use uh, enhanced features, for example, videos or all these things. Uh, from the point of view of the user with a GR framework, all these things seem to be transparent and you have the same uh, set of commands for all these devices, which are uh, Windows, uh, Qt, uh, X windows, uh, you can create uh, Tesh, you can uh, create videos on the fly, as I uh, already mentioned. You can even create uh, HTML5 output from our 3D part, which is called GR3. And this is a, a part of software which uh, will be enhanced in the future, probably with, with, with Simon software. I, uh, I think we should uh, cooperate. I was very impressed about your uh, talk. So th this, these are some examples uh, which, which show the resu results. You might know these plots from a plotlib, and they look exactly uh, with with a GR backend. And the difference is they are faster, but they are not so fast as I would have expected. Uh, here you can see some animations which I have made. Uh, with uh, the GR framework. Uh, for example, in the, the, the second animation shows uh, audio signal, which is read from a WAV file and then uh, transformed into the uh, frequency domain with a Fourier transform and then displayed online while it is played. You can do similar thing Using the microphone input, the software is uh, uh, perform f performant enough. There's en enough performance to do such things, even with, with, with about uh, thousands of points. 
Uh, unfortunately, I have my display here. Okay, doesn't work. I'll try it later. <laughs> uh, so there's also uh, interoper interoperability, interoperability now with uh, GR and PyPlot. Uh, you can see the different blocks of code, which are very simple. The problem is that, for example, loading the PyPlot module from uh, Julia takes uh, a lot of time. It has turned out that there are about 13 seconds on, on my MacBook until the software is ready to go. Uh, importing PyCall in the second step is fast for any re reason, I don't know. And importing GR is always uh, very fast. It takes about uh, milliseconds because it's just a wrapper for a C call interface. And then you can see three blocks where I used totally different graphics uh, operations. The first block is uh, Matplotlib. The second block is our 3D software. And the third block is simple a 2D animation. Uh, and I can put all these things together into one output frame and create a video or, for example, WebGL output on the fly. Okay, yesterday I learned in a tutorial that there's something like Juno. I didn't know this before, but I tried it this, this, this morning. And as you can see, it works. And uh, it's a nice feature to have a simple IDE for, with, with syntax highlighting, command completion, and all these things. And it works out of the box. Uh, here you can see different uh, two notebooks which I have written and which are on the website I mentioned in, on my first slide. And you can see the performance chart. Uh, as I mentioned, the improvement with the GR back, back end for Matplotlib was not as expected. I was a little bit disappointed. So it's uh, maybe times two faster with my back end. But if you use the same soft uh, plot, if you create the same plot with GR framework, you see there's a f it, it's about 100 times faster than Matplotlib. And uh, the only disadvantage is that we st yet don't have all these convenience functions that Matplotlib has. But this is uh, uh, on top of our to-do list. So what happens next? Uh, as I mentioned, we want to provide more convenience functions. Uh, my idea is to implement a complete uh, MATLAB uh, uh, interface because it's, it's well documented and, uh, well, I don't have to write a documentation then. Uh, also, we want to migrate our GR3 library, which does the 3D OpenGL stuff with legacy code, uh, to modern OpenGL and use a GL shader language. So we will be capable uh, to visualize millions of vertices or faces. And we have already some proof of concepts or, uh, and or some uh, master theses, which are currently in, in, in on, the, on the way. And uh, I think in August, we will have a so solution for that. Uh, it's also important, I think, to simplify the installation, although the GR framework has no dependencies in the Julia framework. Uh, you, you need some uh, Unix tools or all these things, uh, that's for sure. You need an X-Window environment and all these things. So, uh, But I want to simplify this installation uh, and make it even easier. Right now, you can simply add the package GR. And uh, if, it, if the uh, installer doesn't find uh, an existing GR framework, it will just install a binary. Uh, I showed you some uh, molecule, molecular dynamics uh, simulations uh, on one of the slides before. This uh, code was, is currently written in Python, but we want to migrate this code to C uh, because the Python version is simply too slow. And if we uh, migrate it to C, we can use it both in Python int and Julia. Uh, I would like to make it in Julia, but then the Python viewers can't use it. <laughs> uh, we have also made a proof of concept. Uh, we were capable to compile, to transpile our complete graphics library uh, using mscript into JavaScript. So maybe in the near future, we can run our software complete in the browser. 
we have already uh, some test plots which work fine. So this is uh, some challenging uh, idea and I think we will uh, further investigate in, in this. Uh. So here are some resources where you can uh, find uh, in documentation, where you can find the package for the Julia language and uh, where you can find the molecule package and the material I used in this uh, talk. There are all IPython notebooks, uh, Jupyter notebooks and old scripts you have seen here with the, correspond with the uh, corresponding data files and, and wave files. So uh, I would, uh, uh, last but not least, I would like to thank my colleagues which uh, have made great contributions to this software and so if there are questions, I'm ready for questions now. Thank you. Right now, it's primarily used in our institute and in some of our outstations, and we use it uh, for 2D and for 3D uh, simulations uh, for our physicists. And uh, well, we have plans uh, to make a browser version so that, uh, for example, uh, guests which uh, make experiments uh, on, on our instruments uh, can visualize the data from remote and don't have to install our software so they can uh, analyze and, and visualize the, the data they have measured uh, on our site uh, from remote only by using the browser. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.